The church that I grew up at was a really neat place, very Bible-oriented, led by the Scripture. And I learned a lot while I was there. When I was in high school, though, the church went through a pretty ugly disagreement with a number of families. And my dad was on the board, so I heard a side of the story that a lot of people didn't hear. Most of the arguments seemed kind of insignificant to those of us that were on the outside of them. For instance, one of the arguments was about silverware. That's right, silverware. And this was something that nearly split the church. These kind of arguments are really important. And so we are reading through the book of Acts this month, 28 chapters trying to do one a day. And so we're up to chapter 6. So in chapter 6, the church has met with its first big disagreement. And on the surface, it may seem pretty insignificant, but it turns out to be a pretty important thing. So, if you haven't read chapter 6, I'd uh, encourage you to pause the video, read that. You can click on the link in the comment section and see that, and then you can play the rest of the video. I have a few things to share with you. So, if you're still watching, I assume that means you've read chapter 6 of Acts. And so, what we see in the first section is the first disagreement recorded uh, in the church in Jerusalem. Now, one thing to remember here is that the people that make up the church are from all over the world. You'll remember in some of the earlier chapters that we talked about, these people had come from places all around uh, to celebrate the Passover. And it doesn't tell us anywhere in here that these people went home. Those who became believers, as far as we know, stuck around Jerusalem. So these are people from all over the world. That means that they don't necessarily have jobs in Jerusalem. It means that uh, because they're from other places, they may have limited resources. And so it's important that they be fed. Now, they're Christian brothers. They're believers here, but they may not have anything to eat. And so the early church had created basically a feeding program. They shared their wealth and their property so that the believers who were from out of town and any that were poor or any that didn't have enough to eat would have something to eat. But the apostles realize in this first section that they're neglecting their primary duties, which is to preach and teach about Jesus and you know what he taught them and to pray. And so they pick what is called deacons. And these deacons are um, they're designated to run the program, the feeding program for these, uh, these Christians that are from out of town and those who are poor or didn't have anything. And so that allows the apostles to do what they do. One of the guys that they pick is Stephen. Now you've probably heard of Stephen and um, he's going to take a, an important role in the next chapter. But this is the setup for that. And so in chapter 6 we see Stephen he, is, uh, he gets in a debate with some guys, some Jews from out of town, and they, they um, corroborate a story with a false witness and create a testimony that gets him in trouble. And so they drag him into court. And then the last little line in chapter 6 is really interesting. It says everybody is staring at him because his face became as bright as an angel. And so really interesting setup for what's going to happen in chapter 7. So I want to try to end today with a question or a couple of questions that we could discuss in the comment section. Have you or anybody you know ever gone through a bad church disagreement or breakup? Uh, that can leave you with a real bad taste in your mouth. It can be really painful to see. So what types of ways have the churches that you've been in or been a part of dealt with disagreements among believers? Um, also, why is it important that we press through those disagreements? What can we learn from that kind of thing? So that's my video for today, chapter 6. Tomorrow we're going to do chapter 7, so read that uh, if you have a chance. And uh, thanks for watching. We'll see you tomorrow.